a very good evening from stories around the world to stories here at home this is the national broadcast i'm vidushni sadish kumar hello there good evening i'm niket karna ratna we'll start off with the headlines as usual the president is to address the un general assembly tonight the cabinet approves to obtain an additional loan for 100 million us dollars from the world bank to control the covid pandemic the parliament approves the consumer affairs authority draft bill without revisions an export income exceeding 1 billion us dollars has been recorded in august of this year in comparison to the figure in the relevant month of last year on to those and other stories in detail president gotabe rajpaksha is scheduled to address the heads of state summit of the 76th general assembly session of the united nations today The president's address is scheduled to commence at 9:30 p.m. Sri Lankan time on the second day's session of the world body. Today's session will commence at 11 a.m. New York time, which is equivalent to 8:30 p.m. Sri Lankan time. World leaders at the International Assembly are reported to be focusing major attention on facing the challenges caused as a result of the eruption of the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. The 76th UN General Assembly session has commenced yesterday, subjected to strict health guidelines at 6:30 p.m. Sri Lankan time. The event is taking place at the UN headquarters in New York City. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has welcomed all heads of states who were present at the summit. The world leaders, including President Gotabe Rajapaksha, have participated in a tea party organized by the Secretary General and thereafter attended the General Assembly session. The theme of this year's session is recovery from COVID-19, withstanding the rigors of the disease through expectations, re-establishment of sustainability, responding to the needs of the planet, and respecting of human rights, as well as reactivation of the United Nations. U.S. President Joe Biden, in his address, has stated that he is prepared to give leadership to face all major challenges at present, including climatic problems, peace and security, human pride, and human rights. The US president has also reiterated that his country is focusing attention to dedicate its resources for the sake of overcoming challenges rather than declaring a war. Secretary General of the UN Antonio Guterres and President of the General Assembly session Abdullah Shahid have delivered their addresses in the first session. The UN Secretary General has stated that time has come for the world community to wake up as the world is on the edge of an abyss. Our world has never been more threatened or more divided. He further said that a majority of the wealthy world has been vaccinated, but over 90% of Africans are still waiting for their first dose. The world is going in a wrong direction. As a result, the existence of the world has been threatened. If not, it has become more divided. This shows that we passed the science tests, but we are getting an F in ethics. UN General Assembly's President Abdullah Shahid has pointed out in his speech that the world has faced plenty of challenges, but he requested to celebrate for just a moment for what we have achieved in the past two years. In record time humanity has developed multiple viable vaccines for COVID-19. He added that the scientists and researchers from dozens of countries have collaborated on a remarkable feat of human ingenuity. The largest vaccine rollout in the history of humankind is currently underway. Mr. Shahid said that the, and highlighted the importance of continuing the vaccination program even amidst flaws. President Gotabe Rajapaksha is in the fifth place among the heads of state scheduled to deliver speeches on the second day of the summit today. I have faith and trust in you. I'm honored to welcome you all to the opening of the general debate and this is one such moment. And my friends, they are not wrong. Truly humbled and deeply proud of the foundation of civilization and human being. A meeting between President Gotabe Rajapaksha and President of the Republic of Latvia, Egils Levits, has taken place last afternoon on the sidelines of the 76th session of the UN General Assembly. The two leaders were on the view that strong steps should be taken to further the 25-year-long diplomatic relations between the two countries. The two leaders have also discussed the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy and society. They have also exchanged views on the measures to be taken for the betterment of the tourism industry in the two countries as the pandemic subsides. 
The Sri Lankan and Latvian leaders have also focused on enhancing cooperation between the two countries on the fields of education and digital technology. The two leaders have also discussed the topic of a change in the composition of the UN Security Council and the need for greater representation in the United Nations Security Council for the Asian, South African, the Middle Eastern and South American regions. Foreign Minister Professor G. L. Pires, President's Chief Advisor Lalit Viratunga, Foreign Secretary Admiral Jayanath Kolumbage and Permanent Representative of Sri Lanka to the United Nations Mohan Pires were also present. Now on to a Corona Local Update. The Cabinet of Ministers has expressed agreement to procure an additional loan of 100 million US dollars from the World Bank to purchase 14.4 million doses of Pfizer vaccine and to also cover expenditure involved in the vaccination program. Cabinet spokesman Minister Dr. Ramesh Patirana has disclosed this fact at the media briefing to convey cabinet decisions today. Minister Dr. Ramesh Patrina said that the Cabinet has granted approval to the proposal presented by Minister of Health Dr. Kehliya Rambukwala to obtain an additional loan of 1 million US dollars. He added that Sri Lanka has conducted an extremely successful vaccination program. The aim is to vaccinate 60% of the local population. Another aim is to further strengthen the emergency res response project. The World Bank has agreed to provide a loan for the purchase of Pfizer vaccine doses and for other expenditure involved in the process. Twenty-five million vaccine doses have been given to the people under the COVID vaccination program. 13,906,987 have been given the first dose of a vaccine. 11,203,890 have been given the second dose of a vaccine. 738,584 doses have been inoculated in the past seven days. 183,278 vaccine doses have been given yesterday. Chairman of the State Pharmaceutical Corporation Specialist Physician Dr. Prasanna Nagunasena says that COVID vaccinations are being administered on children based on medical scientific data. The inoculation of persons between the ages of 20 and 29 years has been conducted in many districts today as well. A vaccination program for persons between the ages of 20 and 29 years in five Gramaseva divisions in Kotagala was conducted at the Kotagala Tamil National School today. Inoculation of persons between the ages of 20 and 29 years was also conducted at the Kaluvila Sena School in Anuradhapura today. The Sri Lanka Army continues to engage in inoculation of COVID-19 vaccines at the Diyata Uyena premises in Bhattaramulla. Inoculation of the second dose of the Sputnik V vaccine to people in the Kandy Municipal Council limits has commenced today. It will be conducted till the 25th. Vaccination program was also held at the Mahanama College in Peradhaniya today. Three retired female teachers of the same family aged 105, 94 and 92 years were also vaccinated at this program. A program to inoculate those above the age of 20 years organized by the Lady Ridgeway Children's Hospital Baralla was conducted at the St. Luke's Church premises today. A private bank and the Asia-Pacific Corporation Organization on Disaster Management have contributed equipment valued at 7 million rupees to the Lady Ridgeway Children's Hospital today. 878 COVID-19 patients were detected from the country today. 60,810 persons are currently receiving treatment. Meanwhile, 882 patients left the hospitals today following recovery. The total number of fully recovered patients is 435,022. The Director General of Health Services has reported 92 COVID-19 related deaths which occurred yesterday. 71 out of them were those above the age of 60 years. The number of victims between the ages of 30 and 59 years is 19. Two of the victims is under the age of 30 years. The IGP C. D. V. Kramaratan has requested the Director General of Health Services to grant permission to open bookshops under the supervision of public health inspectors in accordance to the health guidelines during travel restrictions.
The Sri Lanka New Innovators Commission have handed over four new creations to State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana and State Minister Specialist Physician Dr. Seta Arambipula yesterday. A music concert organized by the National Youth Services Council titled Be Happy with Youth was held at the Navagamo District Hospital today. The Consumer Affairs Authority draft bill was passed in Parliament without revisions today. Accordingly, the fines being imposed on persons who sell goods above the government-controlled prices are to be increased with effect from today. State Minister Lasantala Givarna said that according to the new revisions, the fine imposed on a single business is to be increased to 100 to 500,000 rupees from 10,000 rupees. If the offender was found guilty for the second time, the currently imposed fine of 20,000 rupees will be increased to 100,000 to 1 million rupees. For a company, the 10,000 rupee fine will be increased from 500,000 to 5 million rupees. Cabinet spokesman Minister Dallas Alhaperima has reiterated the need to continuously maintain education for the future well-being of the children of the country. He made his remarks participating in the media briefing to convey cabinet decisions today. <laughs> Minister Dallas Alhaperima said that the Minister of Finance has agreed for a discussion with trade unions. Discussions have already been conducted with the Secretary to the Ministry of Education and also with the Minister of Education. He added that more than one year has elapsed since students sat for the ordinary level examination in 2019. The Minister further said that these students are unable to attend advanced level classes. The Minister also said that students who have sat for the Grade 5 scholarship examination in 2020 do not have the opportunity to enter a school. A situation has arisen for not being able to release ordinary level results. Advanced level applica application forms have been issued for 4,400 candidates. According to the Commissioner of Examinations, only students from 1,732 schools have appeared for the Grade 5 scholarship examination. This shows that there is a problem. The Minister added that, however, a solution has been provided to the problem, but one faction says that the solution is not adequate. The Minister has requested with great respect all relevant trade unions to be most sensitive on the future of the children. He also said that all must get together and commit themselves to overcome the crisis. The Minister has also responded to the queries of media personnel regarding the incident that had taken place at the Anuradhapura prison recently. Minister Dallas Alapirma said that the IGP has issued a statement relating to the incident stating that an investigation is being conducted on State Minister Lohan Ratwatha. Statements have already been received from 23 persons in this regard. A cabinet discussion has also been conducted on this issue. The Minister further said that the Minister of Justice has sought permission to conduct an inquiry under the leadership of a retreated justice. The success of a government depends on the people's confidence on public representatives. The government has acted in a correct manner in this connection. He further said that the Monaragala High Court has recently issued an order regarding the Provincial Council poll and on a member who took bribes. Such exemplary verdicts are essential for the country. The minister also said the government and the opposition take different positions regarding the establishment of a health democracy. A ministerial subcommittee has been appointed to organize the 74th Sri Lankan Independence Day commemoration ceremony. President Gotabe Rajapaksha is the chairman of the ministerial subcommittee. The other members are Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha, Ministers Professor G.L. Piris, Dinesh Gunavardhana, Gamini Lokuge, Janaka Bandara Tennakon, Kehli Ramukwella, Chamal Rajapaksha, Dallas Alahapperma, Basil Rajapaksha, and Vasudeva Nane Akkara. The Cabinet of Ministers has granted approval for the continuous implementation of a program for the purchasing of essential commodity items by the Lanka Sadasa under stabilised prices for the next three-month period. This was a proposal submitted by Minister Dr. Bandula Gunavardhana. The program has been implemented since April of this year. 
Accordingly, agreements are to be reached with the suppliers chosen through exchange agreements. The Cabinet has also granted approval to implement an action plan between Sri Lanka and Vietnam for cooperation in the field of agriculture. Permission has also been given to sign an agreement in this regard. The proposal in this regard was submitted by Minister Mahindanand Dalut Gamagi. The new action plan will be implemented during the 2022-2024 to period. The Cabinet of Ministers has also approved the implementation of a project to develop the Gold Harbour by attracting investments of the private sector. The proposal has been presented by Minister Rohit Abe Gunavardhana. Plans have also been made to implement a national youth development program titled Expectations of the Youth, which could address the challenges and expectations confronted by the Sri Lankan youth community. The program in this regard was presented by Minister Namal Rajapaksha. The objective is to actively incorporate 5.6 million youth between the ages of 15 and 29 years for the community development program. The cabinet has also granted approval to replace the Yon Puraya program implemented till the year 2019 with the expectations of the youth program targeting every divisional secretariat division. The Sri Lanka Podujanap Education Services Association says that Lanka Guru Sangamia is threatening teachers and principals over the phone, demanding them not to engage in teaching. This was disclosed at a media briefing of the association in Anuradhapura today. National organiser of the Sri Lanka Podujana Education Services Association, Sisira Kumara, said that the teachers and principals are being adversely affected by the teacher trade union. He has urged not to destroy the future of the children. Well, Minister of Public Security Sarat Virasekar says that group of teachers was summoned to the CID yesterday to record statements according to a complaint received from several teachers regarding intimidations. Minister Sarath Virasekara said that many teachers have personally told him that they are engaged in the strike due to threats imposed on them by the union. He said that obstruction of duties of government servants is a serious offence. He has warned that stern punishments will be given to those who make an undue influence on teachers even by award. Parliamentarian Vasanthayapa Bandara said in Parliament yesterday that it was hilarious to hear the utterances of the present-day opposition who had remained silent during the expansion of Muslim extremism in the country during their tenure. Parliamentarian Vasanthayapa Bandara said that the Islamic State concept of IS organization had aggravated Islamic extremism in 2014. A local Muslim terrorist went to Syria. However, the then government had failed to break the connection between local and foreign terrorists. He recalled that Rajit Sena Ratna had failed to make any reference on the IS terrorism in Sri Lanka. He also said that the Reverend Cardinal, Father Cyril Gamini and Venerable Galagodate Sri Nanasaratero had rendered enormous service against the spread of extremism. Sri Lanka has recorded an export revenue exceeding thousand million US dollars in August of this year in comparison to the figure recorded in the corresponding period of last year even amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. The highest income has been received from the government sector amounting to 491.5 million US dollars. The exports intended for the European countries was around 22.97 of the total exports. 4.8 percent has been exported to Middle Eastern countries and 2.7 percent to the African zone. The United States of America has also received 25.3 percent of the exports and the United Kingdom 7.3 percent. The revenue from tea exports was at 116.7 million US dollars. Minister Vasudeva Nane Akara has presided over the opening of a new branch of the State Pharmaceuticals Corporation in Puttaporte town today. The minister said on this occasion that a brutal mafia had been in operation during the previous regime when a medicine which could be purchased for 300 rupees was sold at a price as high as 50,000 rupees. 
The 48th state Osusola branch was set up on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the corporation. State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana, Parliamentarian Madhura Vitanage and Chairman of the SPC Specialist Physician Dr. Prasanda Gunasena were also present on the occasion. Minister Gamini Lokuge has presided over a meeting of members of the Kasbaba Urban Council today. Development of the Perakum Yaya Lake in the Singapura of the Valikanda Divisional Secretariat Division in the Polonaro district has got underway recently. Six million rupees is being spent on the project which provides benefits to 215 families. Speeds and cook Seeds and coconut saplings were handed over to 50 families under the Samurti Arunulu program implemented by the Department of Samurti Development in Shravastipura, Anuradhapura, yesterday. That's all the news for today. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Good night. Good night.